I've been chased out of Kansas City. I'm not allowed into Canada. I'm not allowed into Japan. I almost wasn't allowed back into Afghanistan. Dave's kind of, you know, it's an amazing painter. It's like the freedom of expression that he has is quite unlike most other painters that I know. Most of the stuff he's painting kind of comes straight out of his head. So most people are using reference material to refer to. Dave, I think, is just drawing on that vast pit of imagination that's somewhere inside of his mind. So he's got a very free and loose style, which makes him for a very interesting painter. Like, you know, Dave could paint a 200 foot mural out on, out on the street or sit there for hours on end and paint with a one hair paintbrush. So he's got a massive versatility of style. Real graffiti is it's vandalism. It, it could be pretty or it could be ugly, but it's, you know, it, it's, a, it's in a different context. When I come to Europe, the people that I see buying spray paint at the stores is couples, families, little kids. In America, if you're at the spray paint store, the people coming in are teenagers with hooded sweaters on. That's like what you expect. So. Uh, my career in graffiti has actually been pretty short. I've not spent, you know, not to shatter any illusions, even though I'm wearing a butthole shirt, like, I've not spent that much time, uh, maybe like my early teens, actually destroying tons and tons of public and private property. Um, I mean, who am I bullshitting? I, I still do it a little bit now, but for the most part, like, it's just a very sexy word, I guess, especially in this day and age. I've, I paint murals, I spend 90% of my time doing watercolors, which is considered the most pussiest of art forms, I guess. I, well, basically, I was painting the eight, eight different paintings and I went back and forth between, do I want to make eight paintings that look like they're in a series or eight paintings that are like totally different from each other? Sort of as if, you know, eight different artists had painted it. And I had a little bit of ideas for certain paintings as I started them, but then for that one, I, I said, this is one that I just want to have complete fun with. Like for the painting with the head, I was like, I, I just want to have fun with this one. I don't want to think about it at all. I just want to just go like free form and throw paint and make a big mess and just let it dry. And then whatever I see that comes out of it, then I'll just keep pulling things out. So that one was, that actually is my favorite one because it, it just is madness and chaos and then, and then shaping it into something. The one with the, there's a couple with one's wearing red cowboy boots, the girl's wearing red cowboy boots, and the guy's wearing red tennis shoes. That one I named Red Shoe Diaries, which is based off of uh, some soft core uh, cable stuff I used to watch uh, in hotels r rooms when I was on the road. And I just looked at them, I said, they're both wearing red shoes, and one of them's making direct eye contact, and the other one's awkwardly looking away. It's like it, things come to you as I'm as I'm painting them, and like that one, it's it's there's it's a man and a woman. So are are you like are they a couple? Are they not? Who's gonna be drinking this wine? Are they gonna be? Is it gonna be a first date? Are they gonna be um, having a good conversation, or is it gonna be awkward? Bird Brain is, there's a woman that I painted 
looking up, which was sort of difficult, but I wanted it ultimately at the end to be vertical, or I mean horizontal. And I had a really crazy hairstyle for her to fill out the whole space. And then, you know, just walking up and down between the winery, I keep seeing the, the Von Beck uh, duck logo. So I tried to put the duck in her hair, but then it looks like a weird crow instead. So, so now she, I just call that one bird brain. Just two, three days in of painting on the white wine crates, I'm using so much paint on some of them that the wood is starting to warp, which I think is pretty cool. Like a lot of my earlier paintings that I did when I was younger was on wood that I would find on streets and signs and bus benches and stuff. So when people come to my house, they just like to like look around and try to grab drawings and paintings I have. It's easier now but to just go here, just grab some wine. There's my art on the label and you can drink it too. It's functional. dog bat, which is pretty self-explanatory. There's a dog that is laying on his stomach and he looks very tired and lazy. And there's a woman looking in the same pose on top of him, resting on him. And it is a dog that has bat ears and bat wings. It came up first from just the title, actually. My friend was explaining to me what a dog bath is. A uh, dog bath is when you, when a, it's, it's not pleasurable to either the man or the woman. It's when a man pushes his balls into a woman's butthole and like a dog trying to give a dog a bath, the dog keeps jumping out of the bath, your balls keep popping out of the, the woman's butthole. For, for the most part, I consider like anything from like spray paint, acrylic oil, like all the real, real man, tough guy, whatever paint to be they're actually, those are the most pussiest because you can do anything with them and it's forgiving. Like I can paint something right now, it'll be dry and I can paint over it. So there's no, there's no fear there. But then to, to use watercolor, it's like painting with magic. Like when I paint with watercolor, it's, it's like um, if you mess up even a little bit, then you have to start over. So it's like using magic or being like an alchemist or something like, so I spend most of my time uh, doing watercolors, you know, on Sunday, and and then I and then I live off the whole graffiti stuff, you know. I don't like to correct people when they go, "Oh, is this graffiti?" I go, "Yeah, it's graffiti." Even though I'm getting paid a lot of money to come here and do this, it's like, no, I'm. There's no, there's no, no police are gonna come and chase me down and stop me. And, but yeah, I've been I've been painting pretty much my whole life. huge canvases in my in my studio that I just paint over and over again and without the threat of a deadline they, they, they just never like I'll paint something and the I'll come to work like a week later and look at it and go this is the worst thing I've ever painted and paint it over so these paintings in my warehouse right now have like 30 40 different layers of paintings on them and then they'll never be finished because I'll just paint over and over um, so to come here and then them you know the winery says I have a week to finish eight murals. That's that's like a real deadline. That's like I think that's how I function the best. So even even half of these paintings have different paintings under them or have switched into something else uh, throughout the week. And I think that affects that you know that comes from how much cheese I eat or how much sleep I got the night before. Or, or uh, I, I'm just having fun. I like to think. These are gonna be seen sideways on a wine bottle of people drinking, so I'm playing with that. The concept behind the My Fanbeck project is to bring the world of street art and graffiti together with the art of winemaking. Each painting was done on a large wooden canvas constructed using 84 wine crates the concept behind this project is to create a series of eight paintings 
that will be used as labels for eight different wines. When the artwork was finished, the paintings were on display in a gallery in the winery until it was time to bottle the wine. Each painting is the artist's visual interpretation of one of the Carf van Beck wines. The art gallery served as a source of inspiration where art meets wine and where anyone visiting Carf van Beck could also enjoy these works of art. In late autumn, the wine was ready to be bottled. The eight paintings were then carefully dismantled case by case and then moved to be filled with bottles of wine. The bottling process begins by filling over 500 bottles for each wine. The wines have been aged in oak barrels until they have matured. The wine is then filled in each bottle and then moves through a mechanized process where the wine bottle is corked and sealed. The final touch is when the wine label with each respective artist's design is applied. At this point, the bottles are ready to be packed into the wooden crates with a side of the original artwork painted by the artist. Each wooden case is filled with six bottles of the limited edition wine, award-winning wine from Cav van Beck and original art from artists from all around the world. The cases are then packaged and boxed, ready to be shipped to anywhere in the world. The My Van Beck wine case is delivered directly to your door soon after the wine has been bottled. There are only 84 cases available for each wine, so this is a collectible wine with original artwork. These limited edition cases can be ordered directly from Cav van Beck at www.myfanbeck.com. The Bio Domaine Chateau Rouge is an organic red wine with ripe black currants and black pepper on the nose with a nice hint of oak. This wine is a blend of Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Merlot grapes, and is a nicely structured wine. On the palate, it is very jammy, with a slight hint of clove. The Biodomaine Chateau Blanc is an organic white wine with an intense floral nose, with hints of fresh fruit and almond. On the palate, it has a soft, fine acidity, with hints of fresh-cut grass and candied fruits. For over 2,000 years, wine has been made in the Valley region of Switzerland. Grapevines thrive in the pure mountain air and are nourished by mineral-rich streams coming from the Alps. Cav van Beck is one of the premier wineries in the region and one of the producers of organic wines. A van Beck is a term used to describe a connoisseur or gourmand someone that truly appreciates good food, art, and good wine. Cav van Beck seeks perfection in making wine and strives to please all those that share their passion. David Cho and the entire Mai Fon Beck team stayed at the Chalet Altitude 1600 in Nenda at the heart of the Swiss Alps. An authentic traditional Swiss chalet located on the ski slopes of the Four Valleys, one of the world's best ski resorts. Chalet Altitude 1600 
offers stunning views in a tranquil location. With a modern style interior, this chalet has all the comforts of a home, including a fully equipped kitchen, Wi-Fi, jacuzzi, and hammam. A perfect retreat for business or pleasure all year round. Please visit our website at www.musacrentals.com.